In this video, I'll show how to develop a potentiostat from a programmable system on a chip. This potentiostat was developed at Narasan University Electronics Laboratory by Kyle and Pratana Lopin in the Faculty of Science. To get started, we're going to need a PSOC 5 LP board. In this video, I'll show how to use a CY8C kit 59 to make the device. You can also use the CY8C kit 50 or FreeSock 2. So the 59 kit is only $10 at the Cypress Semiconductor store. You can also find it at other electronics distributors such as Mauser and DigiKey, but the price may vary. You can also use uh, the CY8C kit 50, but it does cost more but it does have some peripherals such as an LCD that you can use to develop. For the FreeSock 2 from SparkFun, this board and the CY8C kit 50, you will not have to solder any parts on as the headers are already soldered on these devices. The other thing we'll need is the PSOC programmer from Cypress Semiconductor. You can get it from this webpage and the link will be in the description below. So you have to download here you will have to sign in to the Cypress Semiconductor to download it. And you'll also need the Potentiostat hex file. And you can find that at my GitHub repository. So I will be doing the version 1.0 here. But updates may be uh, loaded in later that you can look for. A file of this will also be listed with the PLOS One paper that you can grab from there. So now you take the PSOC 5 LP development board and you plug the male end into the USB port of the computer and now we're ready to program the PSOC 5 LP. So now the device is inserted into the computer. You will wait for some pop-ups if the driver is installing. Then you can go to PSOC Programmer, and if it's a new device, it will usually say that this programmer is currently out of date, and you have to update the firmware on the programming device. So you click OK. You want to make sure that it's connected. And now to update it, we go to Utilities, Upgrade Firmware. So now it's verifying it. And the device is now ready. So we're going to load the hex file. So we're going to go file load. We're going to go to downloads. And we're going to get the hex file that we got previously. We're going to open it. And then program. And now the potentiostat is programmed into the PSOC 5. Okay, now we have the potential stat programmed into the PSOC 5. We're going to add a capacitor between a ground pin and pin 3.1 so that we can use the 12-bit DAC with a 1 millivolt resolution. And also to connect the electrodes, so we have the reference electrode at 3.4, the counter electrode at pin 3.6, and the working electrode at pin 0.0. So either you can use easy clips such as these, and these can connect straight to the pin. And now you can connect the electrode using these. Or sometimes I will also use alligator clips attached to female headers. So to use these and to interchange them fast, I use these headers here. So we're gonna add these in, the capacitor for the deck. And if you bend the capacitor leads, it will hold it in place while you solder it. And now we have this. 
Now I'll start the soldering gun and we'll solder everything together. Okay, now when your soldering iron is ready, you can solder the headers on. So I already soldered one. There's the other one. Oops. The soldering irons need a little too hot, but okay. And then I'll solder on the capacitor. Okay, all of the headers and the capacitor are on now. I'm going to cut these leads off because I don't need them anymore. And now the device is ready to be used. Okay, so now we have the device made. Uh, when I went to test the device, I realized in the last video I put the headers in wrong. I put it in 0, 1, and 0, 2. So I added a new header to 0, 0, and 15, 5. That's fine. You can add as many extra ones as you want as long as you have pin zero zero, so you can connect the working electrode to it. So we program through this end of the development board, but to connect the device to the computer to use the potentiostat, we use this USB port. So we're gonna connect a micro A USB port to this end. But this is a development board, so you have to watch out. There are exposed reset pins and if you're doing electrochemical experiments, there's some solution that could interfere with the electronics. So I like to use an enclosure. So use the enclosure and I'll have a link to this in the description if you want to print this out. It's just in a 3D printer. So I put the electrodes to the enclosure top first and then I connect the counter to pin 36, the reference to pin three, four, and the working to pin zero, zero. So now <clears throat> I can put this in the enclosure and we'll be looking to make a different enclosure with banana clips instead. And now you can connect this device to this USB port. And now you have a potential stat that's working with the counter reference and working electrodes. So now we have the device plugged in, but we need to control it somehow. So to do that, we made a graphical user interface for the potential stat, and it can be found at GitHub at this link that will be in the description below. But to use the USB port through it, we're going to use Zadig to install the driver for it. So you can go here to find the Potentiostat uh, graphical user interface. So we'll download this. And we'll also download the Zadig. There's the download. So you run Zadig. You allow it to make changes. Then you go to Options, List All Devices, and you will see uh, either Ampometry or NU Potential Stat listed. And the driver here is already associated with it is correct, but if this does not say LibUSB0, you want to do LibUSB Win32, and then this will say Install Driver. Now the graphical user interface will associate with the device. So now you can just run this program and it will associate the device. Now Windows is blocking it sometimes, but you just click through to run Windows. There is also a, a folder that you can use that is slightly faster. 
So when the program first pops up, it will ask you if the 12-bit DAC capacitor is installed or not. So because we soldered it on, we click DAC capacitor installed. And now this is the graphical user interface for the potential stack. So it currently can perform cyclical, cyclic voltammetry. And you can change the different settings. So you can change the start voltage, end voltage, the sweep rate. And there are different current ranges. You can view the voltage profile as a function of time by clicking on here. And you can do cyclic voltammetry, linear sweep. And for cyclic voltammetry, you can start at zero volts if you want. It also can perform ampometry. So you just set the voltage and the current range. Uh, the sampling rate is currently fixed at a kilohertz. Or you can do anode stripping voltammetry where you can set the cleaning voltage, time, plating voltage, and the peak voltage in the sweep rate. So now that we have the device connected in the controller, we're going to test it using a 47 microfarad capacitor to test the cyclic voltammetry function. So the current through a capacitor is the capacitance times the change in voltage with time. So if we give a 1 volt per second sweep rate, this on a 47 microfarad capacitor, we should see a 47 microamp current. So to do that, we're going to change it to the two electrode configuration. So in options, you can change between the two and the three electrodes, and it will update here so you see what it's set for. And then you click Run, and the scan rate's already set. And now you see the characteristic sweep rates. So you can put in a label also put in notes here uh, you can change the label here if you want or change the color and save data and the data should be saved as a comma separated values you go to the folder the data is now saved the voltage versus the current. So that is how to make a potential stat based on a programmable system on a chip. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions, you can email me at kyle at nu.ac.tv.